Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 12.0.1. On my iPhone XS, it came in at 157.5 megabytes, and a little bit smaller on this 8 Plus, 104.7 megabytes. Let's take a look at the build number. You can see the build is 16A404, and this build pretty much fixes all the issues we had with the iPhone XS and XS Max. And also one thing to note is if you're on iOS 12.1 betas, uh, you'll probably already have these fixes. If you don't, you'll actually have to downgrade using iTunes in order to get this update. So it's probably not worth your time if you're on the betas. Now, the first thing they've fixed has to do with charge gate. Now this was something that was affecting quite a few people affected my iPhones about once out of every five to 10 times. So if the phone was asleep, and then you went to plug it in to charge it, it may not turn on. You could try it over and over and over. You'd have to wait for it to fall asleep, plug it in, and it wouldn't charge. But they've fixed this with software, and apparently it was the board in here recognizing there was a charger, but not waking everything up so that it actually charges. So you could usually get it to charge just by tapping the screen. It would start to charge. It wasn't affecting people wirelessly charging, just with the plug. And it didn't matter what adapter you used either. So they've addressed this, it's fixed, and it's no longer an issue. Now the other thing they have fixed specifically on the 10s and 10s Max has to do with the actual Wi-Fi connectivity. A lot of people were having issues with Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi wasn't working properly when it was reconnecting. So maybe you were joining your network and it would join on the 2.4 gigahertz band instead of five gigahertz, even if you had it set to use a faster or different frequency. So it just would default always to 2.4 gigahertz. Now I tested beforehand to see what this was like and I wanted to see what it was like after I updated to see if we have any improvement. I have gigabit internet, so technically I can get a thousand by a thousand. I don't normally get that wirelessly, but let's see what we get anyway before take a look at that now. You'll see this is before I installed the update as software update was available. Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get on Wi-Fi. And the problem is it connecting with 2.4 gigahertz network. So you'll see we get about 80 down or so and about, about the same for upload. So it's not working as well. And now we'll take a look at it after. So let's turn on Wi-Fi here. We'll set this down and we'll hit go. And let's see what we get. So now we're getting better speeds. We're probably on that five gigahertz network. Those are the speeds I would expect over Wi-Fi. I'm not terribly far from my wireless router, but you do see a difference depending on your distance. And like I said, I can go to a thousand if I'm wired. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it definitely seems to be improved. The next change is specific to the iPad. They actually moved the one, two, three number on the keyboard. So take a look before. And here it's moved to the right of the emoji keyboard for some reason. And here you can see after it's back in its original position. So they've fixed this and hopefully they don't change this again. Everyone gets muscle memory as to where to tap on things. And then when you change it, it really screws everybody up. So they've fixed that now and it's back to where it was. Now the other thing has to do with video. So if you're watching a video, maybe you've got something from the iTunes store and you use closed caption, the closed caption may not show up or, or the subtitles. So those may not appear. Now they say subtitles, closed caption, whatever you'd like to call it, but subtitles in movies is technically what they said here and they're not showing up for some people. Also, there's some security updates that they addressed in the background. Now there was no news as to whether or not they've fixed the issue with LTE on the 10s and 10s max that people were experiencing. I have T-Mobile and while this affects mostly CDMA carriers, such as Verizon and Sprint in the United States, it is affecting others. In fact, I'll have full bars while I'm driving or something like that using CarPlay. And then I just will lose connectivity. I'll have to turn on airplane mode, turn it back off and it fixes the issue. So there's definitely something going on with that modem and it's hard to say if that's fixed in this one they don't specifically address it or anything so we don't know if that's repaired hopefully it is and we'll see in a few days after I do a follow-up but let me know if you've seen it fixed yourself because that would definitely be something that's uh, good to be fixed but I'm assuming they're gonna to have to do that in a later firmware update, maybe 12.1. The other major thing they've fixed has to do with Bluetooth. And I know a lot of you will be happy about this as I've got a ton of different comments and even emails about Bluetooth and where it would just become unavailable. So if you're using Bluetooth, whether that be with AirPods or anything else, it just wouldn't be available or it may not work well. And Apple has supposedly addressed this with this particular update. 
Now speed overall is pretty good. This is an iPhone 6s plus many of you have been asking to check this one out and scrolling is fine and things like opening game seems to be pretty fast not incredibly fast but it works like you'd expect and if I go to this one you'll see we go here maybe we'll go to this just turn the volume down maybe we'll go to this one We'll load the game and it loads like you would expect. Now this isn't necessarily a hugely intensive game, but it works really well. And on a device as old as this is compared to the new ones, there's no problem using this one whatsoever. I think it's pretty good that a device of this age is still supported at this speed and still working just fine. So any of your games should work just fine on the older devices. And of course, all the way back to the 5s should have this so if it's working on ios 12 it should work fine or better on ios 12.0.1 now the last thing is a geekbench i ran a geekbench and i took some screenshots and this is before on ios 12 you'll see 4815 for single core 11409 on multi-core now i did take this on an iphone 10s max and then i did the current geekbench on this version, which is 4,815 and 10,356 on the 10S. So very similar scores. While they are different devices, you can pretty much expect the same thing, the same experience as far as smoothness. As far as it locking up in settings, so far so good, but it's hard to say if that's going to continue or not. That has been a continuous issue since iOS 12 betas and remains with 12.1 betas. So hopefully 12.0.1 frees it up and fixes some of those maybe security bugs in the background. So that's really it for this fairly major minor 12.0.1 update. Let me know your experience in the comments below. I'll also link the wallpaper as I always do in the description. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.